Morning everybody, welcome to Solo React Talk. This morning I'm going to be reacting to a video requested by Zafarok. Uh, it's called BlizzCon The War Within Deep Dive Panel World of Warcraft. Uh, this is in relation to my reaction to the opening ceremony for the War Within um, expansion of World of Warcraft. And yes, this is a continuation of that BlizzCon meeting, if I can say that. And yeah, I know it's not Monday. It's Wednesday right now. I'm sorry about this, guys. Uh, and also, I've also changed my location. I used to be in the study. Now I'm back up in my bedroom. Uh, so it has been a long time since I've been up here, you know, and making reaction videos. So it's good to be back. Uh, hopefully you guys will also enjoy the change of scenery. <laughs> um, and also, the atmosphere of Solo React Talk is still going to be pretty much the same just you know in a different location while well, back to the first location which is my bedroom <laughs> okay um let us start with the blizzcon uh, war within deep dive panel remember guys if you guys want to check out my previous reaction to other world of warcraft related content the warcraft monday playlist as well as the world of warcraft cinematics and trailers reactions parts playlist is going to be at the top here just click on them and you'll be able to access them. Okay, three, two, one, go. Welcome back, BlizzCon. We're starting the day off right. Here's the World of Warcraft Deep Dive. You know, I thought they were going to be playing uh, music from The War Within. I thought maybe they would give us like a sneak peek of the soundtracks that are going to be playing in the war within. But, you know, Dragonflight soundtracks are also quite good. So yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Good afternoon, BlizzCon. So good to be back. Whether you are here in the arena with me right in front of me, whether you're watching from elsewhere in the halls, whether you're joining us from the comfort of your home, thank you for taking the time to join me for this deeper, closer look at, at what's coming next in the war within. <laughs> I love you too. I love you, Blizz. The crowd is as vocal as ever expected. <laughs> Come. So Morgan and Maria gave you kind of a sneak peek at some of what's coming. Today I want to spend a bit more time giving you more information on the core features of War Within as well as a few things that didn't get mentioned at all yesterday. So, beginning, yeah, just a little, little teaser there. Um, hold on guys, I need to find a pen. Um, okay, yes. Okay, delves. Okay, let's continue. So, to begin, let's talk delves. So, what is a delve? As you heard yesterday, delves are these quick bite-sized epic adventures for flexible size groups, for so either solo or with up to five players. They are role agnostic, so it doesn't matter if you're a couple DPS, if you're a healer and a tank, if you're a solo healer, we're gonna make it work, we're gonna meet you where you are, how you want to play. Delves are a new end game pillar. This is a permanent addition to World of Warcraft going forward and represents kind of a capstone to the outdoor world experience. We've had um, I'm not sure what does he mean by an end game pillar. I, I, I think I understand when he says delves are uh, a part of the game, but I'm not sure if he means that they are necessarily part of the storyline of, you know, the war within. I'm not entirely sure if that's what he means that, you know, it's a part of it like it's a choice whether you want to continue on with the main storyline or you go with the delves and the delves is also related to the main storyline but it's not part of the storyline I, I don't know i'm not i'm probably confusing myself um but the point where he says it's a new end game pillar what does he mean by that does it mean that you can finish the entire uh expansion you know, just with these quick adventures of maybe one player or five players, 
Hmm. OK. We've had dungeons. We've had raids. We've had organized PvP. And I think we've you know, had some stuff for outdoor world players to dabble in. But if you wanted progression, if you wanted goals, if you wanted a deeper, more structured experience, frankly, we were letting you down. We want to change that. That's what delves represent in World of Warcraft. So structuring this, really we want to approach it as something that you are going to be engaging in all season long with variety and flexibility in how you approach it and the replayability of, the, replayability of the content is kind of a mainstay of what it's all about. Um, but also want to build in progression. And I think if you're an outdoor world focused player, a lot of the time it's just about kind of spending your time doing a thing, going to a place, completing an event, but there aren't necessarily goals to work towards. There aren't necessarily reasons to be excited about getting an item upgrade because it's gonna let you do something you haven't been able to do before. A difficulty progression built into Delves is going to enable us to offer that. Now, there's a lot of lessons we've learned over the years from building this type of content, whether it was Torghast in Shadowlands, Island Expeditions, scenarios, you can throw in horrific visions in that list. Um, we've learned a lot about how to tune these sorts of experiences, how to design them for flexible scaling groups of different sizes of different role compositions, about you know, what's fun and what isn't. But we've also learned, based on your feedback, about what not to do in some cases, in terms of how we structure it, how we present it. I think a key aspect of saying this is an end game pillar is that it's an offering in parallel to the others, to dungeons, to raids. If you want to do this, if this is your jam, if this is your type of gameplay, we're there for you and we want this to be as deep as you want it to be. If you're happy running Mythic Plus and you just want to focus on that, we're not looking to add another item to the checklist of things you feel you have to do to compete. It's an alternative. Unlike Torghast, which is something that, you know, we did kind of say, everyone has to do this, whether you like it or not, whether you'd rather do something else or not. That gets back to some of the philosophies that Morgan touched on yesterday and how we're approaching designing and evolving World of Warcraft. We want to meet you where you are. We want to respect your time. We want to offer you the ability to choose how you want to spend that time each day, each night in Azeroth. Okay, so it's an option for players to decide whether they want to enter into these uh, Delves short, quick adventures. You know, they don't have to organize themselves into large groups that uh, head into dungeons. Uh, you know, like with, I don't know how many players in total can you have going into a dungeon, but I'm assuming it's a lot of uh, players. But, you know, with the Delves, since it's like a quick adventure kind of thing, and it's also related to the storyline, um, you know, it's going to be uh far more easier and far more convenient for players who are not really having the time to be playing for hours to have at least like a 30 minute experience with uh, other players like four or five players you know heading into uh, into a uh, delve dungeon or uh you know open world where they can just contribute uh, fight, collect whatever resources or rare items are out there and then after those 30 minutes or 40 minutes of playing then you're out again, you know. So basically it's just convenience. For those who don't have the time, for those who have other responsibilities, at least they can play World of Warcraft for at least 30 to 40 minutes, then they're done, then they get out. Because if they were in a, uh, a large group of players uh, and you're all heading into a dungeon, you have to complete that dungeon, I'm assuming, you know, you have to be there with your teammates fighting uh, and uh, doing all the organization and all that type of stuff just to attain uh, the objective of defeating this particular dungeon. And some people just don't have the time for something like that. So I think Delves is that alternative for people. And it's not a compulsory uh, you know thing to do. This is just another option uh, For players if they want to do something like this and I'm thinking also new players will also welcome something like this You know, they don't want to be thrust into the deep end of responsibilities of big groups, you know heading into dungeons and and, and uh, You know the other players are expecting you to do X Y and Z and if you don't then you know They'll actually bite off your head so at least with this, you'll be able to play alone or you'll be able to play with four other people and you'll be able to learn how to play the game, how to contribute 
and you know it's just for a short time playing in these particular maps or dungeons in the uh, quick adventure of the delves and then you're out so yeah mainly it's convenience mm. okay So in terms of the character of, of Delves and what, what a specific one will be like, um, the vibe here is about unraveling mysteries, it's about exploring, it's about feeling like an extension, a seamless extension of the outdoor world experience. These are not dungeons. Every dungeon is ultimately about killing a series of bosses or boss-like encounters, and the dungeon is over when you kill the final baddest boss at the end of the dungeon. And that's kind of the structure that they all have to conform to. As much as, we like, as much as we try to vary the formula a bit, that's pretty much what they're going to be. In the outdoor world, things are a bit different. We can, you know, break some more of the rules. And really, at the end of the day, the one consistent thing about Delves is that they're all going to end with a room full of treasure. Some of those will have a final boss guardian in front of them. Others, you may be, you know, just exploring, traversing the Delve, flipping switches, solving a puzzle, defeating lieutenants, gathering things that you need to open the vault door. We can vary the gameplay, we can vary the feel of the experience. These are going to be instanced experiences, but they are seamless. When you walk up to, you know, this, uh, as I'll show in a second, a uh, fog door at the entrance to a cave, at the entrance to a structure, you're just gonna walk in, no loading screen, and now you're in a delve. You wanna make sure this really feels like part of and an extension of the outdoor world. Wow, no loading screen. Hmm. So you just walk in. Interesting. Okay. Okay. That's that's nice. Now, as part of an in-game pillar, that means we want to tie this into. We're going to tie this into seasons. So, as well as you know, a narrative progression over the course of a given season. Um, there will be increasing rewards, increasing difficulty, and a change of pace, whether you're in season one of War Within, season two, and so forth. Part of that is going to be the NPC companion that will be accompanying you on your adventures. The season one companion, as we mentioned yesterday, is our good friend, Brand Bronzebeard. Now, what does this mean? What does a companion mean in practice? Well, it's a few things. One, it's, it's definitely it's a narrative hook. It's, it gives us a chance to help give, you give, give context for your adventures, kind of narrate what you're going through. Um, but also, it's a chance to kind of play with the mechanics and complement your play style. As Bran ventures with you, you might find some gear for Bran. You might be able to gear Bran up. You'll be able to spec him and customize his abilities to complement what you or your friends are bringing to the group, whether you want more survivability, whether you want help with someone to tank, whether you want more control. This can help us balance the experience as well and give you another vector for your progression over the course of the journey. Now, I know this has kind of been very high level. I wanna just give a couple of specific examples just kind of a day in the life of someone jumping into delves in War Within. You know, uh, with this NPC companion, I think they've already started the process of, you know, putting this into the game of World of Warcraft uh, during the uh, Dragonflight Seeds of Renewal. Because I remember seeing in that trailer, they said that they were adding in NPC companions, I think five NPC companion options uh, into the Dragonflight Seeds of Renewal uh, expansion if I can say that and yeah I think they're just continuing on with that within this new expansion War Within um, I think it's going to be more like an in, like a RPG type of game that I would play <laughs> you know in terms of having NPCs ha uh, joining your group if I can say that like I'm thinking about Dragon Age or Mass Effect or any of these other types of um, RPG type of games where you as the player uh, start recruiting um, you know very important NPCs into your group and you know these NPCs have their own storylines they have their own backstory you can contribute to their armor set like uh, we've been told right here and you know they'll be able to contribute to your protection or to your attack value against any enemy so yeah, this is interesting. So you don't actually have to have players with you, like real life players. You can actually have your NPC companion 
who's also going to be there to back you up. Hmm. Okay, so you have an option. Whether you're playing alone, whether you're playing with a group of friends or other players, I mean, or you play with the NPC companion. Hmm. Yeah, definitely convenience. Convenience all around. So let's say you are casually journeying across the Isle of Dorne uh, and its pastoral beauty, and you come across this structure with that fog door set into it, and you decide to venture in. So as you venture in, um, you are, as I mentioned, seamlessly in the delve, and you will find, just huddled inside the entrance, a group of expedition scouts who have come to this place, they've heard reports of great secrets, great treasures, powerful relics stored within, but they've been unable to proceed further because, they tell you, and Bran is among them, mind you, they tell you, this place, there's, there's an unnatural, there's a disturbing darkness that has settled over this entire vault, and we can't proceed. Fortunately, they have in their possession a relic that they have brought that is an enchanted candle that can light the way. It has a little light radius around it. Um, if you think back to the Vault of the Warren's Dungeon, if you remember that in Legion, what the basement was like, where it really felt like a, just like a dark, scary place, but you could have this beacon in the darkness to guide your way, you have one of those. But, they tell you, it has very limited fuel. They dare not proceed on their own because they worry they're just going to get trapped in the darkness and destroyed by the terrors within. But you, of course, being the champion who's come along, you're up to the task. So you take that candle with its light radius that will begin to shrink progressively as your limited fuel burns, and you take some steps into the delve. Now, who do you find in here? Well, as it happens, you run across fellows like this guy. Uh, you know, more jacked than your average cobalt, but there's a lot of cobalt in here. And as you know, as any World of Warcraft player knows, where you find cobalts, you're gonna find candles. And this guy's gonna put up a fight, but it being World of Warcraft and all, you're going to take his candle. Are you sure you're the good guy in these games? <laughs> are you sure you are really the good guy? I mean, really, this cobalt or, or um, you know, wolf creature is just minding its own business. Minding its own business and then here you come along, you kill it and you take its candle. Are you sure you're the good guy in this game? <laughs> And you're going to take the candles of his allies and his brethren. And, you know, that will help fuel this magic light that you have. Help. Of course, you don't say that you exterminate the entire village if there's going to be a village of these things up there or, or you know, people. You don't say that part. Mm. Keep the light burning so that you can traverse the entire delve, defeat a couple of lieutenant-type enemies, bosses, solve a puzzle or two, and at the end, you make your way into the vault room that Bran is able to open once you bring him there, and you find this mock-up um, work in progress of a treasure room, heaping with riches, tre tre treasure chests of various shapes and sizes. Some of the smaller ones, you can just walk up and open, collect a range of items, currency, rewards, you name it. Um, but you'll find a couple of extra large resplendent chests in this room those may require special keys to open. Now those keys you would obtain from doing kind of outdoor content, weekly quests, they're a bit more limited in how you can get them, but also allow us to offer and pace out the best rewards that are on par with some other end game content to make sure it's not you know, infinitely grindable or anything like that, but it's an extension of your outdoor world loop if this is your play style. Now, let's say you come back to the same delve on another day, you might find that there isn't a magical darkness settled over the place. Instead, there are earthen locked in battle with kobolds, and you can help turn the tide of that fight as you work your way through, dealing with some different challenges along the way. Variety, replayability, lots of layers to the experience. Now, so things don't stay the same in these delves. You know, once you get out, uh, things change in that uh, delve. So when you go back into that particular delve, it'll be a whole uh, different story in terms of what's happening in there. You won't necessarily find the cobalts. You won't necessarily find other, uh, you know, people in there. It'll be a different situation where you'll have to now navigate and figure out how to get back to that uh, chest room to unlock that chest that needs the keys. Oh, okay.
All right. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. Things change. They don't stay the same. And, you know, it just makes the game even more fun, I would say. Because you have more work to do. Uh, and it's not just the same predictable type of situation where you know the enemy behind this door or you know the traps behind this door. Uh, you know, it's just a totally different scenario. But you still need to get to that end goal, to that chest. Mm, okay. So you venture back out into the zone, heading off to a different corner of it, and you come across this cave surrounded by mushrooms. Uh, it's known in legends as fungal folly. Now, maybe not being the wisest adventurer, that sounds like a great place to enter, so you take a few steps forward. In here, you might find an environment where, whether it's due to unusual ores or whatever in the walls, the rules of gravity are a bit, bit topsy-turvy, uh, and you'll find mushrooms scattered around the cave that you can use as basically jump pads to help navigate the environment, to skip over enemies you want to avoid, to reach high up ledges that you couldn't otherwise get to. Or, or, you use your dragon. <laughs> I'm assuming uh, the dragons that you guys have been uh, flying with, or the drakes that you've been flying with in Dragonflight, are still going to be usable uh, within this new expansion. They have to be. They have to be. I mean, that, that Pandora's box has been open. You can't close it. <laughs> so those dragons, those drakes you guys have been flying with, I'm sure, I'm 100% positive that they're going to be keeping them in, the, in this new expansion as well. There's just no way they can cut you guys off from such an amazing addition to World of Warcraft, I would say. A fun addition. And that's the dragon riding. Yeah. You can use that instead of jumping on those mushrooms. You're starting to get the idea, like, this is more the world as toy vibe that we try to play with when we're creating outdoor events, outdoor spaces. These are not mechanics you necessarily find in a dungeon, but I think the team really is unshackled, is freed to explore a much wider array of gameplay when we're building delves. So let's talk a bit more about the loot. So actually, before we talk about the loot, uh, sorry, these are the 12 delves that we currently have planned, um, scattered throughout the four zones, each themed around the ecologies, each themed around the settings that you're gonna find. Now, some of the attentive among you may be saying, wait a minute, Morgan's slide said there were 13 delves yesterday. He might be right, but there also might be a secret delve that you have to explore a bit more to discover that awaits you. So yeah, loot. Um, Part of being a seasonal pillar means going to the Great Vault every week and, and getting to share in that disappointment that your raiding and dungeon playing <laughs> brethren have also had the pleasure to enjoy. We just, just want to make sure you don't feel left out. So you're welcome. Uh, so yeah, so you'll note this isn't, this isn't a delves row, this is a world row. And really that is enshrining these three PVE pillars, raids, dungeons, world. You'll be able to unlock some of these slots doing select outdoor world activities, as well as, of course, delves with better rewards from higher difficulty delves. Our thinking in terms of the rewards here, this is all subject to tuning, is that this should reach to, let's say, end boss heroic raid, mythic 10 to 15 type range, accessible just via solo progression. Far better loot than you've ever been able to get before. Like I said, you know, the main theme seems to be convenience for the player. Uh, you don't have to have big groups. You don't have to have to wait, uh, you know, to succeed with a lot of people. You can do it by yourself. You can do it with at least, you know, four people. Or you can do it with your NPC uh, companion. So definitely, it's convenience. And now, I'm sure this is, you know, I know this is the delve section, but I'm sure there's folks looking at this and being like, wait a minute, what about the PvP row? Don't worry, don't worry, we got you. Um, we are removing the PvP row from the vault. We're doing that based largely on feedback that we've heard that randomness and PvP gearing maybe are not the best combination. I know it took a few years to get that message through to us. Uh, so the way this is gonna work is instead, uh, you're just gonna get, you're gonna get a whole lot more conquest. You're gonna gear up at the same rate overall, but you will have complete control over your gearing path just spending your conquest on the items that you want. 
with easier catch up if you come in late in the season, you don't have to worry about having missed certain vault weeks. Also, if you're someone who PVPs a lot and you raid, you don't have the awkward choice of that raid trinket versus the PVP item that's gonna help your arena partners. So. <laughs> hopefully, just good news for everyone. Now aside from, you know, just power, also, you get silly hats. Nothing more to say here. I, I like I like the the mushroom ones, the mushroom hats. Yeah, that that's nice. That's cute. I really do like the mushroom ones. And I, I'm hoping you know they have some sort of like bio illuminescence that they would glow in the dark or something like that. That would be very nice. That would be very nice. Like I see the hats with the candles. Uh, that's also cool. And then the fish with that. I don't know what do, what do they call that fish, you know, with the light source that attracts other fishes and then, you know, it eats them because the fishes are attracted to the light source. I forgot what they call this fish. Angel fish? I forgot. Uh, but yeah, I like the mushroom heads. Very, very cute. Very nice. These just... <laughs> These are just a, a few examples of you know, the array of cosmetic rewards that will be exclusive to Delves, reflecting the varied ecologies and environments you're gonna be facing. So, silly hats, World of Warcraft. Less silly, um, just as, let's say, Mythic Plus players have a mount that they can earn over the course of a- That's a mount? Oh, that is cool. And I'm sure those are the, the parts that you can add to your mount. Oh, that is cool. That is really cool. It looks like it, it can fly. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Given season, this customizable flying mount will be exclusively available through thorough completion of the Delve experience. You note the customizability of it. Um, this will be customizable the same way you can customize your current dragon riding drakes at the rostrum. Just modularly. Look, they might. They might say that it's not compulsory for you to do delves, right? But the rewards that you get if you uh, continue with the delves projects, if I can say that, r is really worth it, I think. I mean, if you can get that mount, I think it would be worth it, really. Where everybody else is on horses or they're on some sort of animal on the ocean or a dragon or a drake, I should say, you will be in a flying vehicle. <laughs> Nothing gets better than that. That that is cool. That is really really cool. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love our artists. Okay. Up next, warbands. I feel like I could probably just save 10 minutes this panel by just saying account wide everything and like just click through the next slides. But it's kind of that. So I don't know if you guys know this, but turns out y'all play a lot of alts. I'm sure that actually the number of characters per person in this room in particular is like some insane average. But the average WoW player today plays multiple characters. The two-thirds <laughs> two of players who have a level 70 have multiple level 70s. Half of players have three or more. Um, most people are playing multiple characters a week. And that's not something the game, you know, it's no secret, has always done the best job of supporting. Now, part of that is because World of Warcraft 20 years ago was built with very different assumptions. And I both mean design-wise, but actually engineering-wise as well. The infrastructure and the architecture that was built. So essentially, you know, World of Warcraft was designed in a way uh, that expected players to stick to one player character or one race or one class of player. You know, they didn't expect players to, you know, stop using this particular uh, player race or player class and then head over to a different race and a different player class. You know, they didn't design the game to do something like that. Okay, interesting. Um, back then, it took hundreds of hours to level a single character, of course, and playing alt seriously was far, far from the norm. But we've kind of inherited, we're still working with, we have been working with those foundations to this day. 
And so when we get requests for them, when we talk about all friendliness, we aim to, we try to do it, but we're often working against, we're swimming upstream, given the underpinnings of a system that were never designed for this. And that's why you get some, frankly, pretty clunky solutions, like, well, if you want to transfer this currency to your alt, go to a vendor and spend some to buy a different box that contains account-bound currency that you can then mail to yourself, log out, log back in, take the box out of your mailbox, and open it on your alt. Congratulations, you have moved 300 supplies. <laughs> Elegant design, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what if we didn't have to do that? So at its core, Warbands is, what if we just rebuilt those foundations and created a new future both you know, for the things we want to offer today and the things we'll be able to in the future so we're not fighting against the nature of the system, but instead it complements what we want to do. Now the focus here is really making it convenient, removing barriers, removing awkwardness in playing alts. We don't want to actively necessarily encourage it. People already want to do it if they do it. Um, one thing the system is not going to be is something that awards you power or makes your main more effective because you have done things on other characters or anything along those lines. So the other characters that you play will still have their own uh, experience and their own, uh, you know, leveling up in terms of situation, right? Uh, the, it won't affect all the other alternative characters that you've created. They'll have their own little silos of uh, rep uh, re reputation, power level, uh, levels that you have leveled up with your character, uh, and skills as well. And it won't literally be passed down to the main uh, player character that you've created. Okay, interesting. All right. If you want to play alts, do so. If you just love focusing on a single character, that shouldn't feel wrong either. Now let's talk about some examples. Okay, so I'm going to run through these pretty quickly. They're mostly fairly straightforward. It's a bank. It's an account-wide bank. Uh, thankfully, hopefully, you should never again have to mail something to yourself. Um, you so what, you just save all the material or armor sets or uh, potions or whatever in this bank, and any one of your characters can withdraw from this bank? So any one of your characters can deposit into this bank, and any one of your characters can also withdraw from this bank. Huh. All right, all right. Yeah, definitely. Like I said before, I think the main theme for The War Within is convenience for the players. You know, we've just heard it with Delves, and now we're hearing it here with Warbands. You know, how easily accessible your alt characters is going to be for you, the player, and how you also be able to deposit whatever you have from this particular character uh, into the bank and it can be withdrawn uh, by a different character, I'm assuming. Yes, okay, hmm, nice. Also might notice, and so the, there's, this is you know, giant, lots of storage, extra tabs that can be purchased on the right-hand side, so multiple tabs of these. You can organize them as you want. The very observant, the eagle eye, will notice a little checkbox mentioning reagents. Um, if you deposit reagents here, you can craft from the account-wide storage on any of your characters. Reagents are potions, right? Yeah. Next up, maybe a little new thing. Uh, something that might, you might put in this account-wide storage are the ability we will now have to create war-bound items that are war-bound until equipped. You might get an item that you can't sell in the auction house or trade, but that you can give to any of your other characters for their use. So, for instance, like if you kill a particular enemy and you, uh, you know, take whatever that enemy had on it in terms of like an armor set and you are a mage class, and you can't wear this armor set because it's meant for a warrior class. That means you can just take it to the bank, right? You deposit it into the bank. And then once you change to your alt character, which is a warrior class, uh, they can withdraw that armor set and they can wear it. 
you know you don't have to sell it you can just keep it in the bank until you switch over to your warrior class to withdraw that armor set oh, that's really convenient <laughs> that's cool you know, these items um, we would drop as bonus personal loot from doing a variety of content. They would drop at a slightly lower item level than what that content would normally give you. Again, we want to make sure the right way to play is not, you know, playing on multiple characters to funnel loot to your main to gear up your main faster, but just easy potential hand-me-downs, ways of getting an alt caught up, maybe even an excuse to level an alt if you get a really cool item for a class that you haven't had a chance to get up yet. So just an extra layer here, hopefully, you know, making it easier than ever to progress, to accomplish your goals on multiple characters. All right, now quick rundown of some of the other integrations we have planned. Transmog. Transmog has always been, you know, it's been for a long time an account-wide collection. Key thing here now that really it is being acquired by your warband, that means that now if you were running, let's say, Ulduar on your mage and a pair of plate shoulders drop, you can still add those plate shoulders to your warband collection. <laughs> Um, isn't that what I was just talking about? Huh. Okay, maybe I'm, I kind of misunderstood what he said in the beginning uh, with the bank. But I, I'm sure it's still the same thing, right? Yeah. So I'm still correct. <laughs> if I'm wrong, guys, if I'm saying something wrong, or if I sound stupid, please <laughs> correct me in the comment section below. Uh, but how I understand it is that, you know, players will be able to uh, collect these particular sort of items that cannot be used by your character, right? So you save it in the bank and then you switch over to your warrior class or to your uh, uh, mage class or to, to, to any class that you have currently and then you'll, you'll be able to access that uh, bank and get that armor set that was in there. Um, I hope I'm right. Yeah, okay, let's continue. <laughs> Yeah. Self-explanatory. And then, you know, if you log on your warrior later, your warrior can equip them, you're good to go. Hopefully you don't need to feel like you need to re-farm the same stuff on as many different armor types anymore. Reputations, again, fairly straightforward. Uh, in War Within, reputations and renowns will work account-wide. We want to make this as retroactive as possible. That will take some work over time. We're probably gonna start with Dragonflight renowns as a focus and a priority and work our way backwards. But going forward, we want progress earned on reputations to not really matter which character you're doing it on at the end of the day. It's the same content, it's the same experience. If you've gained access to some perk or some recipe, having to re-earn it, not terribly compelling. Oh, okay, so there will be some things that will be standardized throughout all your alternate characters. Um, if you gain a particular skill that is related to reputation, all of your characters are going to have the same thing. Okay, all right. So even as you play as a different character, you're not necessarily repeating the entire gameplay from uh, level zero, if I can say that, you know. You, you are starting as a new character, but with a few added bonuses because you've been playing other characters and all those other characters also added in their own, uh, you know, reputation or uh, armor sets or weapons that they've collected or anything else and that you've put inside the bank, things that you can access now as this new character. Okay. Mm, yeah, definitely convenience. <laughs> Here's a really light example, a simple one, just flight paths. As you explore the world, you learn flight paths, you discover flight paths. Is it terribly compelling to have to go back to a spot that you've already been to in multiple characters just to learn a flight path for the fourth time? No. If you have a flight path network unlocked, you have that unlocked across your warband going forward. And here's an example of you know, something new, just delves. Uh, an example of how having this as a foundation means that we can build new systems to inherently work at an account-wide level just kind of as part of their DNA. As you are advancing Bran as a companion, as you are empowering him, as you're customizing him, again, logging on to a different character and going back to having a weaker Bran that doesn't offer the tools that you've grown accustomed to, that's more frustrating than fun to re-earn those things. Let's make that progression inherently warband level, inherently account-wide. Oh, okay, so just like with the NPC companion, 
uh, bran you know things would be standardized uh, throughout all the other alternate characters okay yeah no that's nice that's good And achievements. Um, we've had account-wide achievements for a long time. You know, no secret, they have the little blue bar over them indicating that they function at an account-wide level. What Warbands allows us to do is kind of invert that paradigm and change the vast majority of our achievements to be account-wide, to have that actually be the new default. So if you do part of this PvP or crafting or other achievement on one character, part of it on another, your Warband can earn the achievement. Once your Warband earns it, you've earned it. Again, you the player are doing the thing. Essentially, the player is greater than the sum of his parts. Sum of his or her parts, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, and then this. <laughs> so I'm assuming that this is the war band, right? Okay, and the different um, character players that you have created, if I can say that. You know, you have the mage, you have the invoker, you have the warrior, you have the hunter. And you can create more characters that will be joining this screen. If Yeah, this, this screen presentation, if I'm not mistaken. Because um, I can see here, one is at level 70, the other is at level 13, 67, and 70. Oh, this is nice. It's a nice presentation of, you know, the different types of characters that you have made and now they're in this campsite. Yeah, so you can choose, uh, you know, which one you want. And it just makes it fun and enjoyable. You know, just, just to see your creation with their armor set uh, and what they're able to do and the level that they are at. Yeah, it's just very accessible, very convenient for the player. You know, it's not very complicated to understand. Uh, if you want to switch your character, you go to the warbands and you'll be able to find uh, you know, your other characters that you've made. Yeah, that's nice. That's very nice. Just to kind of signal this shift up front, there's no like mechanical functionality here, but just in terms of presentation, what you'll see when you log into World of Warcraft with multiple characters is a selection of your favorite characters huddled around a campfire or another setting. You'll still have your full list accessible, but we want to make it clear that like you, the player, have this cast of characters that if you want to dress them all up in consistent transmogs, go wild. Um, However, in terms of the warband, are you stuck with, like if you've chosen to be a horde player, are you stuck with the horde characters or can you switch over to the alliance and then have a, you know, a new roster of warband characters, uh, you know, sitting around a tent and then you'll be able to choose who you want to play as as an alliance, uh, you know, uh, player character. And I'm just wondering about that. Like in the beginning, once when you choose your side, whether you're part of the horde or the alliance, is that part stuck, or can it also be interchangeable? And you know, just like adding your characters in your warband, you can interchange between which character you want to play with uh, on that particular day. Yeah, I'm just wondering about that. Okay. Because I think that might be a problem because I want people to be loyal <laughs> to whichever group they've chosen, whether it's the Horde or the Alliance. You know, I don't want, you know, people who are a Horde uh, player for a few hours. The next thing they decide for the Alliance. No, nah, man, it, it, it just doesn't imbue that sense of loyalty and honor and duty. You know, you, you, you don't have a home base. You, you, you just play whoever gives you you know the biggest amount of money or support you know so uh, i think maybe they should not do something like that hopefully they didn't hopefully you know this is just all in my head and yeah it's not going to work out really yeah okay one thing you might note here if you're very eagle-eyed also by the way if you're very eagle-eyed don't read too much into things like the uh, evoker wearing leather that's just, it's internal it's, it's internal mock-ups we're not changing anything crazy there um sorry but you will note that the evoker is level 13. That's going to be a thing that's possible because they'll start at level 10. But um, because Dragonflight's going to be the, the new leveling expansion, by the way, going forward. Uh, one thing you might notice is there isn't really much here about realm selection. 
Warbands are a realm agnostic faction agnostic feature. You will just see all your characters here. If they're on different servers, we'll make it clear that they're on different servers, but you shouldn't have to like go to the change realm screen and swap around. They're just all here. Okay. Uh, here are talents. So, um, at, our, at, at the core, this is a chance for us, as we continue to evolve and advance our class system, to explore some deeper class fantasies, to look at you know, iconic archetypes like the Farseer, or the Dark Ranger, or the Mountain King, or others often inspired by major heroes in the Warcraft universe, other times by fantasies that we've heard are really resonant with players, and focus the continued expansion of our classes in that space. Now, Morgan said this yesterday, just to restate, this is a completely flexible system. It's as flexible as your current talents and specs. Nothing like covenants or anything like that. Anytime you could change your talents today, you can change your hero spec, you can swap around your hero talents. They're just talents. Now, some of our goals here, of course, we want to offer progression, but we want to do so, frankly, while managing complexity to a certain extent. Um, when we started planning for War Within, we knew, all right, we're gonna raise the level cap by 10. 10 new levels means 10 new talent points. The, the kind of default option for us would have been to take the existing class and spec trees and just add a couple more rows to each of them, add new points to spend. But we, we've been down that path before. We know exactly where that leads 15 years ago. There's a tremendous amount, there's an insane amount of like multiplicative combinatorial complexity from adding those additional options and it also destroys some carefully constructed choices that are really successful that we've just built up in Dragonflight today, where you can't quite have all of these things and need to you know, pick one or the other. Suddenly, when you can get all of them, it can lead towards homogeneity as well. So this approach allows us to both explore deeper class fantasy while focusing the decision space in a way that offers power without that excessive complexity. So the way it's generally gonna look is a third talent tree. Again, as mentioned yesterday, at the center of your screen, you have class, you have talent, and in the middle, you have hero talents. Um, you'll note, so there are 10 nodes. There's an initial node that you get as a starter node at the top that you'll get initially when you unlock the system at 71, and then 10 more nodes to unlock. You will get all of them on the way to 80. At level 80, you will have this fully unlocked, similar to Legion artifacts, let's say. So you don't have to agonize over you know, where you're placing any choice along the way. Now, the choices that you will make are which hero spec do you want active? And also, there will be choice nodes within the trees, just as the class trees and the, and the spec trees currently have, which you can toggle, adding quite a few permutations to the system as a whole. If you want, as a kind of simpler collapsed view, once you've hit max level, you can just condense it down to only show, show the choice nodes for easy swapping back and forth to customize your spec for whatever activity you're setting out to do. Now I wanna take a little bit of time to quickly walk through a couple of trees to give a sense of the sorts of things you might find in here. Again, all of this is subject to change, all subject to iteration and the extensive feedback we know we're going to get. Um, I'm gonna use druids a lot as an example here. I'm gonna focus on the case of a balanced druid. Keeper of the Grove, Illumin's Chosen. Huh. Okay. Part of why the team starts, part of why the team starts with Druids is because y'all are complicated. Um, we figure <laughs> there's four specs, three roles. We figure let's try some of the hardest cases first when proving out a design. It's nothing against the mages, warlocks, paladins, etc. but there's a reason why you probably tend to see more Druid examples than other classes because we figure if we can make it work for Druids, the rest will be okay. Um, the two options available to a balanced druid are this Keeper of the Grove tree and a Loon's Chosen. Keeper of the Grove is available to balance and restoration. A Loon's Chosen is available to balance and guardian. The former focuses on calling the forest to your aid, on summon treants and augmenting their abilities and what using that cooldown means for your gameplay. A Loon's Chosen focuses on augmenting your lunar abilities, many of the arcane damage moon themed abilities for both specs. Let's look at the Keeper of the Grove tree first. Um, the first node that you're going to get as you just opt in is just kind of a, a baseline improvement to your throughput while treants are out across the board. This just kind of emphasizes thematically what this tree is about and makes pushing that button, having the treants out more important to you in every regard. Um, some of the nodes in these trees are just gonna be simple, straightforward passives. 
Not everything is going to double and triple down on the same treant ability. Some will, like this, regardless of what spec you are, make your treants add additional damage. Oh, by the way, if anyone's worried, wait a minute, but what about the auto taunt? That's a mess in dungeons. We'll let you opt out of that. Don't worry. Um, or, you know, passives could just augment your abilities, your resource pool, and just make you a better druid. An example of choice node, um, again, this can be about doubling down on and getting more out of having the treants active. Or maybe you really don't want all of your eggs in that basket. Even though you are going into this tree, you want the treants to be important to you. You don't want 100% you know, of, your, of your throughput to be focused in that window. You'd rather just have some baseline improvements to all of your abilities, or to some of your core abilities. This is one of the simpler choices available, but the idea is four different opportunities to nudge your gameplay in one direction or another within this tree. A capstone talent, again, is often likely to double down on and amplify what the initial point was, just reinforcing that having the treants out is going to be a, a, a peak, a spike in your potential, something that you're going to plan around, and just amplify the overall benefits that you're achieving from that. Pivoting to Alun's Chosen, uh, again, this is lunar themed and shared with Guardian Druids. So the first point here is gonna call out three specific signature abilities, two balance, one guardian, and make them you know, meaningfully more impactful to your gameplay. Um, if you're a Guardian Druid, for example, you might read this and realize that yeah, like Lunar Beam is gonna become a pretty powerful defensive cooldown, especially in dungeons, you have a big pull going on, you're leeching a lot of damage back from what you're doing. This is now something that you can really count on and plan around as you approach your gameplay. On the Moonkid side, this of course adds an extra layer to planning and you know, throughput in your rotation. Um, noting a couple of these things that we're modifying may be deeper optional talents in your existing spec trees. We also, where we can, want to offer ways to make sure that you can trigger those effects even if you don't have the baseline talent, though you'll probably want to as well. So this talent, um, you know, so far, Elune's Chosen sounds pretty good. Like, the things I'm reading here, you know, the, the Boundless Moonlight and the Light of Elune uh, options here, really, they sound good. Uh, yeah, don't get me wrong, the other option is also quite nice, but the firepower that you'll be getting from Elune sounds very nice. Sounds appetizing. It just has Fury of Elune triggered as you're doing your regular rotation when you Moonfire, both just naturally, you know, it's a powerful effect that's going to fire more frequently, but also to the extent that the rest of the Elune's chosen tree is tying into it, you'll get those benefits as well. A couple of more passive examples here. Um, again, just doubling down on magnifying your arcane lunar throughput, and a final capstone ability for this tree that is further reinforcing these core abilities that have already been augmented. We'll leave this slide up for a while. Um, these are our current plans for all 39 of the hero spec, so one per current specialization. There's some cool fantasies here to explore. I'm definitely really curious to hear community feedback on all of these, which are exciting, which are most resonant, which sound, frankly, maybe a bit lame. Um, are there any that you hoped you'd see on here that you're not seeing on here. We are you know, well underway building these out, but it's definitely early enough for us to pivot on a lot of these if there's something the community is really excited about. I want to like triple super underscore. You know, the example talents I just gave are work in progress, very subject to change. Probably no part of the game is more you know, prone to iteration, and for no part of the game is the community input more essential than class design, spec design. To that end, when we you know, move into our alpha, probably in the spring. Um, Wait, when is the spring exactly in America? Is it June, July, August? I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Or September? We want to have as many, if not all of these hero specs playable from the start so that we have the entire alpha and beta window to iterate on them, to replace the things that aren't working, to dial them all in to where everyone's gonna be excited about what they're getting and more within. It's a long road ahead. We can't wait to share that journey with you and really just collaborate, discuss back and forth every step of the way.
Right. Now some other stuff. Some you've heard about, some you haven't. Uh, first off, Allied Race, you get to be an Earthen. Uh, awesome blinged out dwarves, or maybe not so blinged out if you want to customize them differently. Uh, these are going to be earned just by playing through the War Within campaign fully. There's no rep to grind here, nothing else beyond that. It's, you are. Like I said, convenience. Very convenient for the player. You are meeting the Earthen as, you know, it's, it's a, a first contact in essence. You're going to learn about the nature of their problems, the nature of their culture. You're going to work with them to overcome those problems, win their trust. And at the end of that journey, it will make sense. It will be a natural next step for them to lend you their aid and join you as either Horde or Alliance. So yes, Horde Dwarves. We haven't yet finalized what the... I'm just trying to imagine that dwarves who are horde members <laughs> it's going to be interesting the racial abilities are going to be but the available classes 10 out of the 13 available classes um everything but druid demon hunter and evoker now on the right side here you see a concept of the heritage armor you'll be able to earn from leveling your earthen to max level all right dynamic flight I like what I'm reading here. Dragon riding is here to stay. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah, you guys, Drakes, are coming back to the main continents of Kalimdor and uh, the, the, the Eastern Kingdoms. Yes. So it was obvious very early on in Dragonflight, um, probably before Dragonflight even released in beta, that we could never go back to how it used to be. Like I said, you guys opened Pandora's box and there's no closing it uh, back, you know, with lock and key. There's no way. It's open. Honestly, we hope that would be the outcome. We hope the feedback would be, this is so awesome. We just want this to be how flying works forever. Um, but we immediately began, you know, making plans for, for what that would mean because, you know, it's just it's the only way, it's the only way to go. And so, yeah, dragon riding is going to become the default, no longer just dragons, uh, but dynamic flight now in War Within and beyond. We want to make sure, oh, weird, I, 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 I meant to have two mounts here, but I only see ashes on the right. But anyway, um, the key point being, we want to expand this to the broader array of mounts that you have available. I think the only downside of dragon riding as it exists today is that you don't have much reason to use so many of the mounts that are your favorites visually, aesthetically, that you've earned and done so much to, to collect. You wanna make sure that as much of your collection is viable as possible. So not every single flying mount is gonna be able to support dynamic flight. There's some you know, animation logistics to work with there, but as many as we can, it's a three digit number. We want a very wide array of mounts being able to just fly the way you've always you know, enjoyed with your dragons. Um, So this dynamic flight uh, option or improvement to the mounts, it only affects uh, creatures that can fly. And not, what about the creatures that uh, are on the ground, you know, like horses or some sort of wolf or lion that you are using as a mount? Do they have their own dynamic type of, uh, you know, animation and speed to them as well, just like the dragon, just like the drakes have? I'm just wondering about that because it seems like, yes, I am happy that dragon riding is here and the drakes are still going to be used and other mounts will also have the same sort of dynamic flying kind of um, uh, system to them. However, you know, the mounts that are on the ground, will they have any other form of improvement to them that makes them also just as exciting as flying in the air with your uh, flying mount? Yeah. And just to clarify, like, this is the future of flying. So everywhere that you can fly today, you will be able to dynamically fly or dragon ride. Now, now, can you fly from continent to continent? Can you go from Kalimdor all the way to Northrend, from Northrend to the Eastern Kingdoms, flying? I think that will also be something, you know, 
that would make the game even more convenient. Instead of taking public transport, <laughs> you know, going on the ships or any other form of uh, transportation to get from continent to continent, will you be able to fly there? I think that'll also be uh, something that I would really find enjoyable if I was playing the game. Remember guys, I don't play World of Warcraft. I wish I could, but I don't play the game. <laughs> um, but yeah, or maybe that option is already in and I just don't know. Yeah, in the comment section, you guys can tell me. Okay. In fact, not just in, in The War Within, a uh, little sneak peek, I think in our upcoming 1025 update, you'll be able to dragon ride in Eastern Kingdoms, Kalimdor, Northrend, Outland, you name it. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone ever highlight Pandaria? You know? No one ever talks about Pandaria. Pandaria is its own continent as well, right? Or is it just an island? Ah, okay. We also, want, we also understand there are some folks um, for accessibility reasons, personal preference reasons, maybe you just like being able to AFK in, the, in midair, that you know, dragon riding isn't your favorite. We don't want to take anything away. We want to let all these mounts that can currently you do the old school flying mode, toggle between dragon riding or let's call it TBC flying. Up to you, whatever you prefer. And again, to be clear, to be clear dynamic flight will be available from the very start when you go to Kazalgar on the Isle of Dorne, just as it was in Dragonflight. Old school TBC flying, Pathfinder style, will not be available right away, but it will be unlocked shortly after reaching max level with no reputation grind requirements. Just play through the campaign, explore the continents, then you can fly that way as well. Um, the existing dragon riding glyph system in the Dragon Isles, um, we, we want to pivot that to a bit more of something that's evergreen. Some of those unlocked traits may, may change to only work within the Dragon Isles, Others that are, that are more essential to just the experience feeling good, like vigor increases, regenerates, the active abilities, are just gonna be things that you will inherently get as you earn dynamic flight and level up naturally. We don't want down the line players to feel like they have to go back to an old expansion and fly around and collect a bunch of glyphs just to be able to explore the new expansion. And in that vein, this is going to be the new default for leveling players. I mentioned earlier, um, when War Within comes out, instead of BFA, Dragonflight will be the new leveling experience that you merge into as a new player after you leave Exile's Reach. And so you're gonna get dragon riding very early in that experience. As you just level up game player levels, you will improve your flight ability and get all the vigor perks and everything else that everyone has come to expect. And that's just gonna be how the game works as a baseline. This is what flight is now. Don't worry, PVPers, we haven't forgot you. Um, this is long overdue. We, we, we really, we should have been doing this earlier. So there's a new battleground coming in War Within. It is a 10v10 map set in the Ringing Deeps. Um, this is inspired by Silver Shard Mines with a few twists. The Ringing Deeps are a place that's full of natural resources, that very sort of thing that the Horn Alliance will be likely to skirmish over. Um, I'm gonna show you a very rough, early, kind of like top-down, mock-up of the layout here. Um, the idea is, unlike Silver Shard Mines, which is radial symmetry, this is more you know, mirrored and re reflects the two sides trying to both push their own mine carts to collect resources while also fighting over a pivotal central control point that's gonna change the outcome and the momentum of the match. Um, this is something that the team has actually been playtesting internally a bunch over the last couple of weeks, having a blast with. When we make battleground maps, we don't really artify them. We keep them really rough, which is why I don't have any good images to show just yet, because it really is all about the layout. Yeah, I was just going. To, I was just about to say that I don't really understand what am I looking at here. <laughs> I can see a green line. I can see an orange line. You know, but otherwise everything else is just very, you know, color mixing. <laughs> I don't know. No point making it look pretty if the spacing isn't correct, if the exact paths aren't correct. That's going to be the next step. Can't wait to get this in front of everybody to start testing in alpha and beyond. 
And this isn't just a one-off. We want to keep adding new battleground maps going forward. This is an essential part of the game. And you know, I mentioned 10v10, but we are just about to undertake a little 8v8 solo queue RBG exper experiment in 10-2 in a week or two. So depending on how that goes, you may be experiencing this one 8v8 as well. So stay tuned. Um, otherwise, we have you know, a few ongoing interface updates that we're continuing to work on. You know, in Dragonflight, we overhauled the, the HUD, the action bars, the unit frames, the baseline UI experience. We made it clear at the time that that was just the beginning. This is something we want to continue chipping away at, updating different pieces of the UI to be more streamlined, better reflective of the modern gameplay experience. So just a couple of examples here. Um, so the Spellbook, we are looking to modernize, update, actually take, make use of you know, more than like a 1024 by 768 monitor resolution. Uh, <laughs> ideally, you're not gonna have to you know, flip through multiple pages to find some ability that's not on your action bars. Also, we're combining this with our talent screen. If you look at the tabs at the bottom, you have spec, talents, and spells all in one, one place, so it's kind of a one-stop shop for all the things that your character has available rather than having two separate windows that you need to move between. Uh, some light, light updates here. I think you know, improving the overall aesthetic of the quest log, the quest window. Um, think, if this is harder to show off just in a single screenshot, but we are adding a bunch of filters to allow you to hide and show different objectives, to see more quests available at once, to you know, filter your log for the things you care about most. We also have a full pass in progress on our quest iconography to make it easier to differentiate between daily and weekly quests and remove you know, our reliance on just shades of color as much as we do, which really, it is a color blindness issue for you know, the range of quest bangs where the only difference is what color it is. Um, and again, this is just a couple of examples of ongoing efforts. We really, this is a project that will never be done. We're just gonna continue improving and updating different aspects of the UI as we go. Yes, so this, this one basically speaks for itself. Uh, you know, I've mentioned earlier, you know, your warband is a cross-realm construct. Increasingly, so many of the activities that players engage in socially span multiple realms. You have a ray group, you have a mythic plus group that you run with, group that you PvP with, but you can't be in the same guild together not any longer. That's a thing that will change when War Within comes out. Apply, recruit, server shouldn't matter when it comes to joining a guild, when it comes to being in a guild, when it comes to accessing the perks of being in a guild. Yeah, more convenience for the players. Good, 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 good. And people may be wondering, wait a minute, what does that mean if now guilds are cross-realm? What about mythic raiding? If, well, if your guild is cross-realm and your guild wants to raid Mythic, you should be able to do that day one. So, no... Wow. All right. No more realm restrictions there. The Hall of Fame will still exist, just kind of as a you know, memorial of accomplishment, but it's not going to be tied to unlocking anything anymore. That's just there day one. And really, just philosophically, this is another step towards one of our goals of just tearing down barriers, making the game as social as possible, making it as easy as possible to play with who you want to play with, regardless of your server, regardless of your faction. As much as possible, if you want to play WoW with somebody, let's make that happen. All right, so that brings us to the end of this whirlwind tour slash deep dive of War Within Features. Um, I know there's still a bunch of questions, a bunch more information to share. Can't wait to do that in the coming days and weeks. But to begin, I'd like to invite everybody, if you have questions, if you're here at BlizzCon, go to the Darkmoon Fair in Hall D. You can drop off questions there. If you're, you know, just go, if you're going online, you can go to the WoW or WoW Classic subreddits or our official forums and either ask your questions there or upvote others. This coming week, when we get back to the office, we're gonna huddle, review the top questions, and record streams for both Classic and for War Within, addressing the top questions to try to get as much information out there as possible. So.
Once again, thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited to begin this journey together with you. Can't wait for the war within. Enjoy the rest of BlizzCon. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. I love you all. All right, guys, that is it. That is it with the BlizzCon, the War Within deep dive panel on uh, World of Warcraft, on the World of Warcraft YouTube channel. Yes, requested uh, by Zafarak. And yeah, really, like I've said before, the main theme for the this new expansion pack that's coming out uh, pretty soon is convenience, really. It's going to be extremely convenient for the current players. It's going to be extremely convenient for newer players who are coming into the game. And really, the delves in terms of how many players can you play with in the delves uh, option uh, from one to five people, or you play with your NPC companion, or you play by yourself, really, that's so convenient for any new player or for uh, the current player base of World of Warcraft and you know the types of rewards you'll be able to get if you play the delves uh gaming game regions if i can say that uh, is also quite nice uh, in terms of the mount in terms of the hats that you'll, re you'll be able to acquire really that looked cool especially with the mushroom hat and the mount that can fly that mechanical vehicle uh, thing that can fly that's cool really and also contributing to your npc's armor weapons improving their own stats you know in terms of attack or defense really i think that's also quite uh, an enjoyable addition uh, it really does take me back to those types of games i i uh, play you know in terms of the rpg type of games of uh, 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 you know if it were to be skyrim or, or mass effect or dragon age you know all those types of character building or npc character building uh, type of options, you know, giving your companions uh, better armor, weapons, and you know, improving their skill points as well. So that that was actually quite an interesting addition right there as well. Uh, war bands, you know, in terms of how many characters you create, you can have them all huddled up in in the campfire, and you can choose which one you want to play today. Uh, that's really a nice addition right there, making it also very uh, convenient and easy for you know the players to choose which one they want to play with on that particular day and the fact that uh, your reputation or the skills that you've acquired uh, throughout the world will also still be standardized with all your other characters that you have created uh, that is also very cool uh, in terms of the bank that will be available to you as a player you know to deposit any form of weapons or armor or potions or money that you have you can just deposit it in the bank and then your other your other characters can access that bank and withdraw whatever suit of armor weapons potions and money that you've deposited into that bank that's really a good addition especially for those who have multiple uh, classes and, and, and characters that they're playing as um, I really did find that as a great advantage for all the Warcraft players. Um, and then also the dragon riding in terms of uh, the mounts that you'll also be having will also have that option, or not option, but they'll also be able to have the same sort of dynamic flying like the drakes in Dragonflight. That is going to be cool. I think that's really going to be cool. Seeing something that's not a dragon, you know, having the same sort of animation as it's flying in the air, and you know, you have those uh, indications to say that you know you've got, you're gathering momentum, you're gathering speed, you're going to use it here and there. You're going to duck and dive, uh, you know, ascend and descend, and do all those type of things that you see the tricks doing in Dragonflight. Your other mounts will also be able to do the same. That's also going to be very fun. Um, I'm just thinking, still thinking about the other mounts that don't have wings. Like, what type of dynamic riding will they have exactly? Because um, I also want those types of mounts to also have something uh, for players to look forward to. Uh, not only the flying creatures, but also the creatures that, uh, you know, walk on the surface. Um, 
and then of course there's also the cross realm guilds you know the different types of uh, groupings that you work with you know you can all have your own guild now where you all work together instead of having a separate guild for a separate uh, job that that you are interested in uh, instead of having all of that now you can all have them all mashed up together and you can all do the same things or you can still do separate things but you still be part of the same guild uh, so yeah that's also quite interesting and yes definitely everything that's been said here in this presentation uh, is in the focus of making the game a convenient easy to understand easy to play game for newcomers and also for uh, the all the players you know the, the the current player base and you know i'm i really want to play world of warcraft i really do i just don't have money <laughs> for the subscription yes i can play the free to play uh part of it but then it will just make me want to play the game even more and thus i'll have to spend money <laughs> oh gosh yeah yeah one day, one day, I definitely will be coming here to uh, play World of Warcraft. That's that's a, a, an assurity right there. Um, yeah, the War Within really is going to be a very fun, uh, you know, expansion. I think, and hopefully you guys will also enjoy it. Um, and yeah, all I can do is just hope for the best for this new upcoming expansion and the storylines. That are going to be unfolding that's what i'm interested in <laughs> mostly what almost like 80 percent i'm interested interested in the storyline uh you know with eridicron and and all other and his associates in, in 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 the shadows i want to know more about what's going to happen with that and the titans of course and the greatest manipulator in all the forecraft you know, I, I forgot how to pronounce her name, but you know who I'm talking about. That blade. <laughs> so yeah, I can't wait to see what's going to happen unfolding in that storyline as well. And yeah, guys, that's it. That's it for today or this morning with uh, the World of Warcraft BlitzCon, um, the War Within deep dive panel for World of Warcraft at the BlitzCon. And thank you again to Zafarak for requesting that I should react to this video. It's been very informative. And guys, remember, if you want to check out the original video as well as World of Warcraft's YouTube channel, the links are going to be in the description below. If you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be updated with my latest videos. And I'll see you guys hopefully next week, Monday. Yeah. Crossing fingers. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.